I love educational technologies. I really do. I find it so exciting that these days we can learn so much from home without even having to leave our houses and a lot, really a lot we can learn for free. We just need to start using the tools, the technologies that are already out there. And I also love, I really, really like to use artificial intelligence. I use a lot of chat GPT in my work. Um, I work as a marketing manager and instructional designer, and I use chat GPT a lot to uh, help me structure my teaching to help me rephrase my messages. So I really use it a lot for language work, right? But since I used to work as a language teacher for many years, and now I really want to inspire you and encourage you to learn languages by yourself, I wanted to try and use ChatGPT as a language teacher or as a language teaching tool, right? And I found some advantages, but I also found some limitations with it. So let's see what I have found. So here I am in ChatGPT. As you can see, I use the free version. Uh, forgive me for that, but it's been working just well. And I want ChatGPT to be my Norwegian teacher. So the first thing I do, the first thing I do, I ask it to act as a Norwegian language teacher. That's a that's actually a magic phrase that you can uh, use with ChatGPT to put it in a certain mode. So act as a Norwegian language teacher. And then I explain to it, I give a little bit more context. I say, I am a student at level A2. So again, it will know more or less what sort of examples, what sort of language it can use uh, to communicate with me in Norwegian. And then I want to practice, for example, I need some exercises to practice the past tense of irregular verbs. And ChatGPT is delighted, it says absolutely, and it says here are 10 exercises for practicing the past tense of irregular verbs in Norwegian. I look at that and I think that hmm, that's, that's really nice, but it seems like ChatGPT doesn't really understand the concept of an irregular verb, because here I get both irregular verbs, yeah, but also some quite regular second group verbs. Yeah. So to eat, spiste, that's a regular verb, right? Uh, to drive or hjøre, hjørte, that's a regular verb. So, but yes, it does give you a good exercise with mixed regular and irregular verbs in the past tense. And what I like about ChatGPT is that it's really friendly. It says to me, this exercise should help reinforce your understanding of irregular verbs in the past tense in Norwegian. Practice them regularly to become more comfortable with these verb forms. If you have any questions or need further clarification, feel free to ask. Lykke til. Good luck. Well, it's really nice to talk to ChatGPT. It's so polite. So I said to it, could you also put the same verbs in a text and let me fill in the gaps before you provide the answers? Because I want to practice by myself. And ChatGPT, it does exactly that. Here's a text with gaps where you can fill in the correct past tense from the irregular verbs provided earlier. And I look at it and I find like, wow, that's, that's really cool. That's really exciting. But when I start reading it, it's mostly, it's mostly good. But some sentences, some sentences really don't make much sense to me. Like this one, for example. My friends drove to the mountain, but I didn't swim because water was too cold. Uh, it is a, yeah, it is a grammatically correct sentence, but somehow it doesn't make sense to me. It really doesn't. Yeah, so, but here ChatGPT uh, gives me an exercise and I act as a student and ask my teacher, are these correct answers? And I make some mistakes on purpose. And ChatGPT really doesn't explain to me here where I gave the right answers and where I made mistakes, but I can compare. I can compare it with my answers. So it only provides me the list of correct answers. And it tells me that I've done an excellent job. For some reason, it says that your answers are all correct, um, which is not quite true because I obviously have made some mistakes here, right? <clears throat> okay, so, but ChatGPT encourages me and says, bra jobet. Then I want to test something different. I want to test ChatGPT to give me an explanation and the context for an expression that I, for example, don't really understand. So I say, on another topic, I don't really understand the expression Could you 
could you explain to me what it means and give a few examples and different contexts? And I also think that here ChatGPT has done a really, really good job. So first of all, it explains what it means. So it's a common Norwegian expression used to tell somebody to sharpen up or pull yourself together. It also tells me that it is an idiomatic phrase used when someone is not paying attention, behaving inappropriately or not performing up to the expected standard. Really well explained. The literal translation of sharpe means to sharpen, but in this context, it means to improve one's behavior, attitude or focus. And then it gives me five different contexts where I can use this expression, which is really, really nice. You can read it by yourself. And then it sums up. It says, in essence, sharpe is a direct and firm way to communicate to someone that their behavior or performance needs improvement or correction. It is a versatile expression used in various situations to prompt someone to do better or change their behavior for the better. Really, really well explained. So in this context, I think ChatGPT has done a good job as a Norwegian teacher. So you can ask it to explain to you a certain expression and give examples. Another thing that I tried to use ChatGPT for was to help me with more grammar and more irregular grammar. So again, I asked ChatGPT to act as a Norwegian language teacher. And I asked it to explain to a student at level A1 how to conjugate, excuse me, decline the adjective little. Uh, liten. ChatGPT doesn't correct me for that. And it says, certainly, in Norwegian, adjectives like liten change depending on the gender and number of the noun they describe. So far, so good. At level A1, you'll primarily work with singular forms in masculine, feminine, and neuter genders, as well as the plural form, which is correct. And then I sort of skipped the explanation. I was very happy with the first part here. And then I just said, well, thank you. Could you, could you give me an exercise with 10 examples where I need to fill in the right form of the adjective, which ChatGPT was happy to provide. But then I came back and I read a little bit more thoroughly these explanations. And I found that they're actually wrong. And yeah, they don't really make sense because I lita jente. And it tells me for feminine nouns, you add an a to the end of liten to match the gender. So liten becomes lita. Well, doesn't really make sense to me. And here as well, at lita hus, with neutral nouns, the adjective liten also remains in its base form without any changes. And that is not true. That is not true at all. Yeah, because it is an exception and it changes differently. And usually adjectives in front of neutral nouns uh, get an ending. Da. Right. So this was not, not entirely correct. So after I came back and reread it, I said to ChatGPT, I see some mistakes in your original explanations. And then I explain what I know. And ChatGPT agrees with me. It says, you're absolutely correct. And then it tries to explain better, but it doesn't really become better. It doesn't really become precise. So the conclusion here is that ChatGPT is not good with exceptions and apparently not really good with explaining grammar yet. So I have shown you now some benefits and some limitations of ChatGPT as a language teaching tool. Uh, and I hope you don't get discouraged from using it because it's still, it, you, can, you can use it for many things. And here I've written a list of things that ChatGPT is really good for. So first of all, it is good to explain general concepts, no exceptions, right? We've seen that. Uh, if, you want, uh, if you want to have some examples or some exercises on a particular topic, yeah, just be a little bit critical. Uh, again with them, but generally exercises are good and it can correct you. Uh, if you want, if you have written a text, if you have written a text uh, yourself and you just want to ask ChatGPT if it is a grammatically correct text, you just copy paste it into, uh, into the program and you ask, is it grammatically correct Norwegian? And usually you get quite good feedback on that. Uh, another thing, yeah, what, what we've seen, if you have a particular expression that you don't understand, well, you just ask ChatGPT to explain the expression to you and provide you with some examples in different contexts. I think that worked really, really great. 
Another thing, ChatGPT can give you, uh, it can act as a cultural guide. You can ask it, for example, to provide you with a list of cultural similarities and differences uh, between your culture and, for example, Norwegian culture. So I focus on Norwegian, but it can be used for any language. And also what I really like, um, you can use ChatGPT as a conversational partner. Yeah, like a chatting partner to practice what you're learning. And I would start it by saying, act as a conversational partner for a student who is learning Norwegian, Spanish, German language at a certain level, for example, level B1. Yeah. And then you start the conversation or ChatGPT will provide you with some topics and you can just discuss. And I find it really, really helpful. Have I said everything? No. So you can also use ChatGPT to help you translate and double check if the style is appropriate. You know, when we translate uh, something from one language to another, sometimes we need to adjust the style. All right. You know that Norwegian is a very direct language. We say do to people. Uh, and in, for example, German, we use a lot of polite forms. And if you translate something directly, for example, an email that you want to write, it might sound too much polite for Norwegians. Or if you translate from Norwegian to a different language, it just might sound too straightforward. So you can ask ChatGPT to both translate and to adjust the style of your uh, text. And one more time, in the end, what I don't recommend to use ChatGPT for, it showed not to be very good at explaining exceptions. And also sometimes it can provide you with some weird examples. So, but it's not perfect. We are not perfect. It's a technology and it is developing. So do use it and use it to your advantage. Good luck.